Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about a case that shocked Italy. In this case, we're going to discuss violence against minors as well. So if you don't feel like it, please click off this video. And if you do, let's start. Erika Denardo was a 16-year-old girl living in a nice house in Novi Ligure, Piemonte, in the north of Italy. She lived with loving parents. Her mom, Susie, was an accountant and her dad, Francesco, an engineer, and her little brother, Gianluca. He was 12. Erika had recently began a relationship with a guy one year older than her. He was 17 and was called Mauro Favaro. He went by Omar. The couple was problematic, to say at least. Erika's mom didn't like their relationship because since she had started dating Omar, her grades had gotten really bad and the couple isolated themselves from their friends. They also did drugs occasionally and it was something that Erika didn't do before meeting Omar. And this is probably what pushed Erika to do the unthinkable. On February 21st of 2001, she and Omar went to the Denardo's house and waited for Susie and Gianluca to come back from a basketball game. Susie again was the mother and Gianluca the little brother. Erika started arguing with her mom in the kitchen and started to stab her with a knife. Omar was hiding in the bathroom waiting for the perfect moment to hit and he was also wearing gloves. Erika stabbed her mom multiple times before Omar came and also started to stab the woman with another knife. She managed to escape and she also broke a chair running and this chair was really solid so she really threw herself on it and you can imagine the desperation of that moment. She broke the chair, kept on running and she was held again by Omar and stabbed again by the couple. Erika and Omar stopped the woman 40 times before she passed away. Her last words were, I'm sorry, please spare your brother. Unfortunately, Erika kept on going with her crazy rampage. So Gianluca, her brother, saw the massacre because he was on the second floor, heard screaming, went to see what was going on and he saw his mom being stabbed to death by his sister. Gianluca tried to escape, but the couple managed to get a hold of him and stabbed him repeatedly. Erika was the first one to stop his little brother, and he just kept on screaming, begging for his life. They couldn't kill him because he kept on fighting, so they decided to fill the bathtub, and push him inside and they tried to drown him. In this moment, Gianluca, he was a little hero. He bit Omar's hand, giving him a really bad injury. To say that Omar deserved that, it's the least we can say. So I really admire Gianluca for hurting Omar like that while he was fighting for his life as a 12-year-old little boy. He was then taken out of the bathtub and stabbed more times and then he died, unfortunately. He was stabbed a total of 57 times. Reading the faith of this little boy really made my skin just crawl and it was really difficult for me to read through this and to repeat what I wrote down so I cannot I cannot comprehend this this crime. I feel like we can all agree that something like this is just unimaginable and it just pains me so much to read what happened to them. So let's go on. Francesco, the husband and dad of Erika and Gianluca, wasn't home when this happened, but the plan was to heal him as well. After the couple killed the mother and the little boy, Erika insisted for them to wait for the father to come home and to kill him as well. Omar refused because he was tired and 
the injury Gianluca gave him to his hand was really hurting so he just wanted to go home. Erika was really mad about this because she really wanted to kill her father as well. Then they started to throw away knives and gloves but they kept a knife on the floor in the kitchen. They weren't careful at all and they didn't clean up blood so the house was just full of their DNA. Omar took his scooter and went back home and Erika went on the streets yelling for help. She told the police that an Albanian man had entered the house to rob them and also gave a description of this man. But the police wasn't able to find any trace of this man and the house didn't have any signs of forced entrance, plus the family dogs didn't even bark when this happened, so the police called the couple to the police station and left them alone together in the waiting room to see their reactions. They didn't know they were being filmed and talked about their crimes, confessing and laughing. Eric asked her boyfriend if he had fun killing his mom and brother. Omar kept on calling his boyfriend murderer, just laughing, so he will go, oh, you murderer, just laughing, talking about Erika. Erika, at the end of this meeting, also told Omar to dress nicely for the victim's funeral that was going to be the following day. On the day of the funeral, just a few hours before they started, Omar and Erika were taken into custody and sent to the juvenile. In juvenile, Erika tried to contact her boyfriend many times to talk about the version of the events to make sure they would have had the same version, so she was moved to another juvenile. In December of the same year, Erika was sentenced to 16 years in prison and Omar was sentenced to 14 years in prison. In prison, Erika studied and got a college degree in philosophy with the highest grades of her class, and now they are both out of prison. Omar was released only after serving 10 years because of good conduct, and Erika spent almost eight, 11 years, and she was also let go because of good conduct. Their sentences, according to many people, were too short, so I really want to know your opinions in the comments. Francesco De Nardo, the father of the killer and the husband and father of the victims, was of course destroyed by what Erika did to his family, but he never left her, he never abandoned her, and he visited her daughter, his daughter every week and spent every Christmas in jail with her. He's a really devoted Catholic man and faith helped him to pull through. Erika got a job in a firm industry and is married and Omar since then married a woman and later got divorced and he was also accused from his ex-wife of being physically abusive. This case has always shocked me and always will and this really, really traumatized Italy as a whole. Do you think their sentences were fair or they should have spent more time in prison? Let me know down in the comments what do you think about this really really disturbing case. I will be posting more Italian true crime cases so if you're interested in that please subscribe and let me know if you have any cases in particular you would like me to talk about. Please be respectful in the comments and I'll see you soon. Bye.